Thank you, everybody, for uh, hopping onto uh, a dashboard-focused webinar today. We're going to chat all about reporting, uh, how to use it in Visor, what it can do for you and your teams when you're you know, project managing, product managing, all sorts of different use cases that we're going to go over. It's going to be a really exciting webinar, and we're really excited to also just show what we've been building and how you can use it. We know Visor is extremely flexible. Uh, and so it's always nice to kind of ground the capability and the flexibility of Visor in some real world use cases, which is what we're going to show today. Uh, but before we jump in, into the content, just a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Dimitri. I'm the product manager at Visor. Um, I've been working with our engineering team or design team, the marketing team to help deliver uh, a lot of the product that you're seeing in front of you today. So if you have any questions, please ask in the chat during this webinar and we'll get to them either after or some other members of our team will get to answering them during the uh, during the webinar as well. Uh, I think the goals for today are uh, kind of trying to make sure that everyone who's joined the webinar, who's using Visor, knows how to use the new dashboard view to uncover project risks, be able to take action on those risks, basically improve team alignment through the use of the dashboard view, and also learn uh, how to share the dashboard view most effectively uh, with either external or inter internal stakeholders. Um, our agenda is going to be a quick uh, refresher into what Visor is for those people that are joining that are a little bit newer. Then we're going to go into uh, talking about the recent releases for the reporting suite. Then we're going to go into a demo and then a Q&A and discussion in case you really have some questions that you want to uh, chat through uh, live and in, in person over, over the Zoom call. Uh, but again, feel free to send those questions in via the chat, and then we can obviously just remember them there and pull them out in the discussion at the end. So introductions. What is Visor? So Visor, it, we, you know, we're, we're, we're a software that helps you uh, build that alignment amongst your team uh, by managing projects or portfolios of projects uh, in a way that's uh, really unified, letting you pull the data from multiple different places and letting you trust that integration, uh, you know, really, really well. Uh, in terms of the use cases that we cover, uh, there's a ton of different variety of use cases that people come to Visor for, either for managing a single project better than in your current tools, uh, or uh, going to uh, a portfolio level view where you're managing multiple projects in one place. Maybe you don't have the permissions or the licenses in JIRA to be able to manage that portfolio view, but you still have those needs. You still have those pain points of wanting to show multiple projects and how they interact, how they overlap, who's doing which tasks in one place to share with your broader team. That's really what Visor is for. Uh, we're all on the Visor team really familiar with the limitations of sharing the data in an easy to consume way, um, especially with those people that don't have licenses. Uh, for Jira. And so that's really where we come in to help you share that uh, more broadly and more easily without having to break the bank on upgrading your entire engineering uh, or company team into uh, having those Jira licenses. Um, so we're for project managers, product managers, all the different teams that you might have. And we're going to sh also share some new updates that are coming up soon that will help bring more of these teams together into one place. Uh, but if you don't remember anything other than this, uh, we basically help you craft the narrative with the data that you're bringing in. Effectively, you don't need to share your engineering Kanban board with your customers or your executive team to keep them in the loop. Visor lets you craft that narrative. And it also makes sure that your data isn't stale if you're already doing that in PowerPoints or Excel spreadsheets today. So, oh, who do we integrate with? Today, we have a few different integrations on the Jira side of the project management software and then on Salesforce and HubSpot on the CRM software. But we do have an Asana integration coming up soon. It should be launching in the next week or two. And that'll really help bring together teams that don't all use Jira today. For example, we've heard so many cases where marketing teams are in Asana and you know the development teams are in Jira, but they don't really talk to each other very well, or there's just miscommunication and getting everybody aligned about what's coming down the pipeline. We're going to be really helping you with those use cases. And the dashboard view can also help uh, bring that together into a reporting suite that crosses these applications. Um, in se uh, segueing into our recent releases, what is the dashboard uh, and reporting suite that we launched uh, back in August. Uh, the dashboard view is a series of, of widgets and reporting tools that will help you track progress, and report key metrics on your project data that you're bringing into Visor. It's a new view type, basically, in addition to the table, Gantt, timeline, and board views that we already have today. 
Um, we launched this back in August, but we have been updating it uh, all the way through uh, until recently. One of the major updates that we had was going from just being able to uh, count the records right for all the different metrics to being able to summarize across all the numerical data you might have, whether that's uh, budgetary uh, data like dollars um, or estimated hours that you guys are spending on the tasks that you have. And the dashboard view is currently available in all the different plans uh, across uh, the, the free plan, the pro plan, and the ultimate plan. Um, and so everyone gets the benefit of being able to use the reporting suite that we have in, uh, in Visor. And I know there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of tools out there that currently do reporting. Jira has a few different ways of doing it. There's, of course, all the third-party plugins that also come in and connect into Jira. Um, I will say that the existing Jira dashboarding solutions, they're just not very ideal for either cross-project reporting, and they're also not very collaborative. So the cross-project reporting that's available in Jira today, um, again, only really available if you've upgraded your entire organization into Jira plans or you're relying on those third-party plugins that, again, only work with the Jira data that you have and not with a uh, other data that you might want to bring in or enrich your, your project data with. Uh, but the lowest tier Jira reporting that I'm showing in the pie chart in the bottom right, it's a little bit more old school. It's not as easy to use and it's not as customizable as visors. Um, and you obviously can't use any non-Jira data whenever you're trying to craft the story that you want to tell. The other thing about the Jira reporting suite is it's really tucked away and separate from the data that you're having, right? It's on a different screen. It's like three steps away from actually the tasks that you are working through or even the text that you want to put next to the reporting to give it a little bit more color and a little bit more um, understanding and narrative. Um, and again, the other limitation that I'm going to keep harping through is the fact that it's really hard for people that don't have Jira licenses to actually get access to these reports, right? And so you're sharing outdated screenshots, the reports to let your VP or director know how everything's going. And that data, again, it gets really stale. And it's also just really tough because they don't even want to see, right, the Jira. They want to see a higher level point of view that you might not be, that, that Jira may with that said, we're going to go jump into the uh, the demo right now. So I'm going to pop in uh, Visor. Let me know if everybody's seeing my Visor screen right now. Looks like yes. Amazing. So what everyone is seeing in front of you is a demo workbook that I put together in preparation for this call. Uh, just setting the stage here, we're going to kind of do mini role playing. Uh, you're basically the, the person who created this workbook is a project or product manager at a tech company that's going to be launching two different products coming up, one of which is a form uh, builder type of project. And the other project that they're launching is a Kanban project management solution. So very similar to where we're playing, but just to give it a little bit more groundedness, there's two projects that are coming up. And uh, since there's so much work that's coming up, you and your manager want to keep a close eye on the utilization of your team, making sure nobody's burnt out, nobody's overworked, uh, and getting things right. So that means two different things when you're in this scenario where you're managing so much work and multiple different projects at the same time. You need an easy way to do sprint planning. So you're staying on top of the tactical and execution that comes your way every two weeks. But you also want to call out those risk items across multiple projects and also just see the progress across those multiple projects. And we'll walk through how to do that in Visor today. Um, and so here, uh, just to bring everybody uh, familiar into the Visor landscape, I've imported uh, a data from a couple of different projects that are working in Jira. Uh, I bring in a lot of the visor. Uh, I bring in a lot of the Jira fields that you'll see at the top here. So on the left, you've got the name of the of the task. You've got the status, the issue types, the assignees. Then I've also interspersed a little bit of visor data in here as well that we'll uh, call out when appropriate. We've got uh, a RAG custom field again, calling out delays or things that are at risk. Uh, we've got launch quarters to more easily call out when things are coming down the pipeline. And we've also got links to documents just in case you might want to uh, send somebody to uh, a PRD for any given feature uh, that you're calling out in your data. Again, really easy to use uh, and to mix that data between Jira data and things that you might not be able to put in Jira, depending on you know if your Jira admins are really locking it down or you just don't want to create things that are a little bit more ephemeral and temporary for any given project. So. Uh, now that we're here, you also see a lot of the colors that we've set up 
to, to differentiate the data, right? Uh, statuses have their own colors, assignees have their own colors. It's really easy to differentiate between the different values here. The other thing that I also wanted to call out is we've imported uh, story points, and that's going to be really key for how we're going to use the dashboard and reporting here. You can use any kind of numerical data coming up to be able to display the information. You can also just count the records, right? But story points are what we're going to use to illustrate how the dashboards work. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. So now let's go make a dashboard based off the data that we have. Um, so what everyone's really going to encounter when they're setting up a dashboard for the first time in Visor is this uh, start template, basically. You can either start with one of these widgets, one of these reports, or you can go ahead and put together all of these contextually with the data that you've already imported. And that's what we're going to do here on the left-hand side. So we automatically make for you uh, a few different reports. So on the left, we give you a text note, we give you an embedded video for how you learn how to use the dashboard view. And on the right, we also create uh, bar charts, pie charts, and numerical data about the story points that are in the data that you've imported, how many items are in progress, how many are still in to do, um, basically dynamically looking at the statuses that you've brought in and breaking that down. The reporting suite here uh, kind of consists of a few more of these different report types. We also have the ability to calculate percents. So let's say that you want to understand what percentage of all the story points that you're working on a sprint is related to a certain type of task, right? Is it related to a particular label? Is it tech debt? Is it performance related? You're able to easily make reports using the percent uh, report here. Uh, and all you have to do is just filter to the information that you're looking for. And we'll dive into how to do that in a little bit later. Um, but the other things that we can do is uh, look at the breakdown of story points based on any kind of drop down field that you've imported. Here in this example, we're looking at the story points per status across all of the data that you've imported into Visor. So um, our status pipeline has a few different steps. We've got uh, preparing work to do in progress, QA, and then the done tasks. And they all have their own color that you can change here on the right hand side as well to kind of match what you see as the colors that represent each one of these steps. Um, you can also change how you're aggregating right now. We're summarizing the story points, basically adding them all up per status. But you can also do averages, minimums, maxes, mediums, and just counting the records of each given uh, status. So here, uh, looks like we have way more items in progress than in preparing, but we do have a large backlog of items in the preparing stage that have a lot of story points, right? That kind of makes sense. And then you also have this really in-depth filtering suite that we'll go into later down here that are really narrow down exactly the types of questions that you might want to answer with a bar chart. So uh, yeah, I think one of the ways that we can also use the filtering suite just to give you a little bit of a preview, is there's two filters that are really powerful, one of which I'll go into now, one of which is you can filter just by the text in your data. So for example, the JIRA connection field, that's just the name of these tasks, and we can say how many of the uh, story points uh, across our statuses have the word design in them for those tasks, just to see, hey, what design work is out there? How many story points does it have? And again, this really shows the flexibility uh, of the Visor reporting suite. Uh, you can filter basically on any kind of data that you have in the system and any kind of operator that you might think of, uh, whether it's empty, whether it starts or ends with a certain piece of text, uh, or if it contains any text. Uh, this is really powerful to get exactly the types of reporting that you're looking to do. So let's step away from uh, this template dashboard. And let's say that you know you worked for a little bit in this and you got to the dashboard that you were really looking to answer the questions that we brought up earlier. And so this is what your dashboard might look like when you're trying to manage multiple projects. On the top left-hand side here, we have the, the little text block where we give some high-level updates, maybe a link to the knowledge base that's coming up, and also just taking meeting notes whenever you have meetings about these two projects. On the right-hand side, we have a pie chart that shows you the breakdown of the statuses on your roadmap. And then we have a high-level you know, breakdown of what is in each step. Here, this is uh, us calling out how many tasks currently are delayed or have serious issues, kind of where that custom data that you're creating in Visor can help with enriching the JIRA data that you're integrating with. So again, this is all Visor data, but on the records that you bring in from, from JIRA. Uh, but 
let's say you want to go even more detailed per project. Here's where you can kind of create and customize the dashboard view uh, you know, in a more portfolio level perspective. So we'll create two areas here. One is about all the form related project metrics. And then down here, I've created a bunch of metrics related to the Kanban, the project management side of the project that we're releasing. On the form side, I have a little text block here that gives a little bit of color to the metrics on the right. Again, this helps answer that problem of the isolated nature of the reports in, in, uh, in Jira where they're off in their own little space. They're not contextual contextualized by your narrative. Um, we can look at the total estimated effort that we have for the project. This is the sum of all the story points that the dev and engineering teams have, um, you know, have estimated. Then we have, for example, the completed effort for the Forbes project to this day. Let's jump in here and see how we're making this happen. So again, we've specified a title, a description, we're using the story points. And here's where the filters really kick into high gear. Um, we're looking at just the dev work streams. So again, this is a custom field that we have in Jira. We're looking at only the story and task issue types because when during our research for reporting, we've heard that there's oftentimes a duplication of the story points in the epics in the lower level tasks. And here you can just look at the story points from any given part of your issue type hierarchy. We also are looking at the completed tasks with status. But the really powerful thing that we can do here is in case your data is missing a little bit of structure, what you can do is you can filter by uh, sets of records within the imported data that you have. So this is this row here. So here we're saying um, we're filtering to just the records that are anywhere at or below this parent item. So we had an initiative that we brought in called Launch the Forms Product, and we had epic stories and tasks underneath it nested based on the import that we got from Jira. And here we're able to filter all of this completed effort for forms project data by just to the records that are sit underneath or at that initiative level. So here we're looking at only the form project and not, for example, the um, you know, the, the Kanban project that we were looking at before. And again, you can kind of break this down to anywhere in the hierarchy of data that you might have. Um, again, you might have some structured data that says this is part of this project, this is part of this project, but when you don't have that structure, and we're not very great at cleanliness on the advisor team either, so totally understandable, it's really great to be able to have this um, synthetic way of, of filtering uh, and, and narrowing down your data to exactly what you need to see. So here, uh, going back out to this area, we've created this like burn down chart where we know the total, we know the complete, we know the in progress. We also know the story points by assignees here as well. And we know the active story points by assignees, right? So again, here we're filtering by the statuses of in progress uh, that we've identified before. And again, filtering by the issue types that people are working on, as opposed to the issue types that represent parent items. And here we've grouped by assignees. So it's really easy to see, hey, Sam is working on 40 active story points right now. That's clearly a risk. And we can call that out in the text on the left hand side here. We're saying, you know, Sam might be under a lot of stress from the story points here. We should check in on this. And again, you're able to kind of combine the narrative with the data. Moving down here, we see that percent. Uh, so that's really great to see how big is the form project relative to everything else that I've set put, put into put into Visor from Jira. And we have here a really easy way where I created the same data, uh, the same data up here, uh, basically by just duplicating these items and then changing one of the filters. Uh, for example, let's say I want to look at this forms uh, and recreate this. All I have to do is hit this duplicate button and then go in here and change the filters to make it, again, part of the uh, project management project. And now here, we're seeing the active story points within this project, as opposed to the story points maybe in the forms project. So again, it's really easy to duplicate these charts and get this template going. So uh, this is the high-level dashboard across your portfolio of projects that are going on at any one time. Some other creative ways of using the dashboard view is I've created a PRD folder down here where we have the PRD for the forms project here, where again, everybody who's coming into this workspace is seeing the right, the exact context of what you're trying to accomplish, what the goals are, some of the milestones that are you find important. And again, you can kind of customize the, the building blocks of the reports to suit your needs. So here, this is just one dashboard with just one text block. But again, it can communicate a lot of information without needing to go into Confluence to see that text 
when your data is actually in JIRA, right? You can all have that in Pfizer itself. Uh, then we have a few other different folders down here. We can, again, break things down into just the engineering tasks. We can look at a timeline view of the different work streams, right? So you can see your projects, who's do, like how much is dev working on this, how much is marketing working on this, when those uh, teams are going to be kicking in to finish the projects. And then you also have the sprint planning uh, data down here. So I've imported a couple of these projects and filtered to just the sprint data that we need to work off of. And I've created these dashboard items here to help us support the grooming discussions and the sprint plannings that are just such important rituals in our day-to-day -day and week over week work as project and product managers. And the way that we've built these dashboards is by utilizing date filtering in Visor, which is something, again, really flexible in our product. Uh, so for example, we can look at the upcoming cycle of story points. And the way that we do that is by filtering by dates. So here, uh, just because the underlying data is a little bit further out than next week, I've been, I've crafted uh, a report that says, hey, what's the sum of story points where the due date is within the next three months? You can change this to be within the current week. You can change this to be historical and looking backwards to the previous weeks, months or so. Here we have days, weeks, months, and years that you can kind of break down that, that data with by looking at the due date. We can look at the issue types, and again, we can look at the work streams uh, and filter by any of those custom fields. And we're able to see that, hey, we don't have any completed uh, story points in the upcoming cycle, but that number is going to increase. And we can also see the average dev uh, story points as well. So each developer on average has about 20 story points over the next cycle that you're looking at. So you can, again, kind of see, are things balanced? Can they be more balanced uh, within the time frame that is of importance to you as a person who's helping plan these sprints? So. Stepping a little bit back now that we've shown both how you do portfolio management using the dashboard view or how you do sprint planning in the dashboard views, how do you actually get this into the hands of other people? We have the share button on the top right corner where you can invite people as commenters, viewers, editors, or owners, or you can actually create sharing links and then share those out to just make it even easier. You put it in Slack, you put it in Teams. Um, and then you can also preview what the dashboard view actually looks like to those individuals. So let's preview that by exporting and checking this out. Uh, what does a viewer see on the dashboard view? Um, here, we see that a viewer sees the data. They can kind of see the, the, the story points. They can see some of the data when they hover over the charts. But they can't edit anything. And this really gives you that customization of being able to share outside of your core Jira trusted uh, users to the people that need to see that data. But again, you might not be in a position to um, you know, give them licenses to everybody on that team. And Visor, our permissioning and our license model is really advantageous for this sharing use case because viewers are free on all the plans. And so you can invite as many people as you can, and they can't really mess with the data in the dashboard view or in any of the other tabs that we have down at the bottom. It's all locked down and trustworthy and safe to be able to share easily. Um, but again, they can access and understand, hey, what these grooming discussions were, what's upcoming in the next sprint and be familiar with the work that you're doing. So everyone's a little bit more aligned without maybe having access to every single tool that you might have as a, a B2B SaaS company or as any kind of company out there. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the, the way that you can share and preview that again to make sure that your data is, uh, is set and to be trustworthy. Um, let me go back to the dashboard view and uh, yeah, just kind of summarize. What we showed was starting from the data that you've imported from, from Jira, you imported a couple of projects. We were able to create uh, a working GAN chart, add the milestones, look at the work streams again, who, who's doing what at any one time, looking for those conflicts and being able to report on the progress that you have as a project manager over the course of these different projects by utilizing the really flexible and powerful filtering and aggregation tools that the reporting suite can give you. So that's, in summary, the demo that, uh, that we just all went through. And we'll go back to the, um, to the presentation to kind of finish this up. As a preview as to what's coming up for both the reporting suite and also other items in, uh, on the Visor pipeline, on our near-term roadmap, again, Asana and Asana reporting is really exciting. Uh, we'll probably have a webinar coming up soon that helps uh, contextualize how to work with multiple data sources in the same workbook so you can get that unification value that I know a lot of us as project and product managers really need. 
getting those advanced filters that you're using in the dashboard view on every view type. So you'll be able to filter by dates on the table view, for instance. Um, we're going to be doing additional investment into reporting. For example, you can see really nicely formatted days and dollar signs on the right-hand side. We'll be able to see that across all the different report types. And then dependencies is coming soon as well. And being able to report through those dependency chains and go beyond any of the capabilities that even Jira Plans has to offer with respect to understanding the risks that come from items that are linked to each other and how they might impact um, you know, the health and uh, the health of your projects. Further out. We're going to be uh, adding some additional sharing capabilities, some table view grouping, so you can see those work streams on the table view, and a lot more. So we're really excited about uh, the future there. Um, I know we're coming up on time. Uh, now, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for attending. But let's open the floor to Q&A and see if anybody has any questions that I can help answer or any of the other advisor team members. Any uh, estimate on the uh, roadmap for um, SharePoint integration? Yeah, I. Uh, what part of SharePoint are are you looking to uh, to integrate? There's a lot there that we could tackle. Uh, I'm not sure. This is a twenty thousand foot view question for you. I have another team that's uh, integrating SharePoint with uh, Jira, and that's a plugin that does that. Mm. And I was just wondering if I could circumvent the plugin by you know switch uh, pivoting to this instead. I don't know. Just just spitballing. Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. Um, I f feel free to kind of, we can follow up after the call to kind of talk about whether this is a SharePoint integration, whether it's also an Azure DevOps kind of integration, right? As a tasks, as a uh, text data, what exactly you're looking for. But uh, we're definitely on the more integrations train right now. The Asana one's coming down soon, and we're definitely exploring what that next integration might look like. So uh, definitely let us know the specifics as soon as you have them. Yeah, I'm a, uh, to be fair, I'm only like 48 hours into your product uh, as far as you know, <laughs> the tire. So uh, I'm not really qualified to ask in-depth questions, but I really, really like what I've seen. I was able to stand it up fairly quickly across the board, you know, on all the tabs. And intuitively, mm -hmm. I could see where this is. I would really like to pivot to this. And the, the big compelling point for me is that I can post it and demo it outside of uh, Confluence mm -hmm. or Jira, you know. So, again, the licensing issue. So that that's huge. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep picking at it. Yeah, great. Thank you. I know we definitely have heard that exact thing about licensing being a, a key challenge of using Jira, right? It's extremely powerful, admittedly, for people who have Jira logins, but the ability to more flexibly share outside of the organization is uh, a pain point that we're definitely solving for. So I'm glad that's resonating with you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll just uh, finish with a, a really annoying question. And that is, uh, like, I'm already with the feature requests, right? Enhancements. So on your bar graphs, uh, which are really cool, yes. uh, I know you can hover over and get the values and all those. Is there any chance in the future of getting like the data point at the tip of the uh, bar graphs to automatically be there without hovering, you know? Yeah, uh, we actually have an engineer on the call here uh, that he's hearing your request, and we'll we'll definitely put that in to the the near term roadmap. Again, we're really committed to making the dashboard view work, and I think it's it's pretty clear that you might just want to see that data without having to hover. So, uh, definitely something that we're going to play around with coming up. I mean, if that's my only feature request, that speaks volumes for how well you're doing. So, <laughs> great, glad to hear it. Any other questions? Lance, anything that you saw here that was pretty compelling? No, that, yes. I mean, it, this will be useful. Uh, absolutely. But uh, no, I don't have any specific questions. So I'm going to go play with the dashboard now and see how I do. But Amazing. It looks good. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm glad. It, uh, hopefully it'll work for you. So really excited to to, to get more people involved and, and excited about this. Um, again, uh, like any kind of, you know, advanced product, there is a slight, you know, ramp curve to understanding it, understanding how to utilize all the capabilities and the powerful features, the filters themselves, uh, you know, they seem simple on the surface, but it might take some getting used to, uh, but that just unlocks so much power once you know which filter and how you want to filter the, the data to get the exact story that you want to tell. So um, excited for you to, to get involved. Okay, uh, so Dimitri, this is Brian again. I, I I lied. I do have one final question. <laughs> so on the table view, right? Uh, mm -hmm. When I brought my Jira data, I'm using the hierarchical view, right? And I've got you know phases uh, down to epics and stories and defects, yep. etc. When you added the um, visor pseudo column there for hierarchy on yours, um, yes. 
you had one in your demo. So would that in any essence, is there a way to show that as a nested value on the left on the JIRA? I, I mean, I know it's not really a JIRA structure, right? It, this is a pseudo. Yeah, uh, definitely. So I think uh, some of that is going to be visible for you through this column called parent here. Uh, where it just shows the direct parent item above the, like what's above the, the item in that row. Um, okay. I guess, is there is there more to the story here that you're looking to to see? Yeah, like, so the, these are, well, the, the on the JIRA connection, I'm going to get that top level one there for sure. And if I, I was just wondering if I made a synthetic one, if you will, you know, a parent of the, the highest level of JIRA, put a parent, put a visor parent on top of that. And showed mm, it I see. Structure. Yeah, um, we definitely have been thinking about how to represent these like non-syncing visor records alongside with the JIRA data and let you kind of, again, go a little bit higher or more lower in the hierarchy. Um, there is a tip that I, I can give you in terms of creating like these records that don't sync back to JIRA. Uh, basically, sure. if you create a JIRA issue and you can say, you know, non-syncing record, um, as long as you don't, uh, fill in the uh, the issue type or the project field. Uh, so if we pull this open, you can select the project here. As long as you don't fill that, you're able to create records that don't actually sync back to Jira. Uh, but to take it up in the next step of nesting Jira items underneath that, that is not something that we support today, but it's definitely something that we're thinking about supporting, especially as we want to support this, like, again, portfolio level analysis and set of views where you might not have represent the higher level initiatives that you're going after in just the day to day JIRA data. So uh, definitely yeah. hear you on that. Um, and you can kind of get halfway there in terms of just populating uh, visor with those non syncing records, but um, nesting everything together is is the next step for us. Yeah, great. It, it's by no means a showstopper for me. It was just a kind of a Johnny Wonders question yeah. when I saw you with the hierarchy there. That's what it sparked during the uh, the webinar. And I was just yeah. wondering, you know, if it was a way there, to there is yeah, yeah, there is one kind of way uh, uh, to to do it actually. So if you go into the settings for your integration, there's a way to uh, ignore the nesting that's coming in from Jira. So uh, basically, when, if you do change nesting in Visor, but you're maintaining that nesting from Jira, the next time you import, everything is going to undo and set into the structure that's coming in from Jira, right? Because we're maintaining that nesting. If you ignore that nesting and you, for example, put the this record above the launch forms product or you nest this underneath, you are able to do that and nothing will mess up. You just won't be able to, uh, for example, bring in new nesting structures that you might have created in Jira uh, in the meantime. So um, there's kind of a, you know, a way to do it if you don't care about nesting and you just want to create your own nesting structure. But there, again, the the thing that we're thinking about building uh, coming up in probably the near to medium term is a way to uh, blend those two together, where you can have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Both keep your nesting that you've created in Visor, but also update that with the new nesting, you know, related data that's coming in from Jira. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any other questions from the group? If we don't have anything else, uh, I don't know if there's anything from the chat, James, but if not, we can probably uh, uh, start ramping down. Uh, no other questions in the chat. I guess the next thing to say is we'll follow up with an email with a recording of the session. And mm -hmm. in the email, there'll be a link to set up a call with Dimitri as well if you want to go over any more uh, dashboard related questions or go through your setup one-to-one uh, -one as well. So thank you, Dimitri, and thank you to everyone.